Welcome to this seminar. I'm Erica Leonard from Vector Laboratories. I'm the Director of Quality Control and a Senior Research Histologist. This seminar is Considerations for Designing Immunohistochemical Procedures. Tissue and cell staining are powerful techniques that researchers and pathologists use to understand the expression, location, and spatial relationships of proteins and nucleic acids in specimens. Clear, accurate results are essential. Each step in the staining process is significant to producing those results. Here's an overview of our workshop. We're going to cover several topics, methods of antigen detection, defining your imaging method, establishing your detection priorities, selecting your reagents, selecting ancillary reagents, optimizing your protocol, and advanced detection protocols. In this section, we're going to be covering essentials of immunohistochemistry. Some of these essentials are methods of antigen detection, defining your imaging methods, establishing your detection priorities, and selecting reagents. The first thing we're going to discuss is your method of antigen detection. Immunohistochemistry is defined as using antibodies to detect target antigens or proteins in your tissue section. And this antigen can either be visualized using enzymatic detection or fluorescence detection. Immunocytochemistry is the detection of specific proteins or antigens in cell preparations. And in situ hybridization is the detection of specific nucleic acid targets in tissue sections or cells. The first thing you'll need to do in designing your immunohistochemistry procedure is to define your imaging method. Typically, you will either be visualizing your results using bright field or fluorescence microscopy. Bright field microscopy involves light being transmitted through the specimen, so you'll need to create a contrast in your tissue section in order to visualize your target antigen. In this section, you can visualize the GFAP in this mouth sprain, which has been detected with Impress Alkfos and a vector red substrate. Enzyme-based detection reagents produce a colored precipitate in your tissue section at the site of your tissue antigen, allowing visualization under your bright field microscope. A second type of visualization is fluorescence microscopy. Detection reagents are labeled with fluorochromes that absorb light at a specific wavelength, called the excitation wavelength, and they emit light at a longer wavelength, called the emission wavelength. You'll want to choose your fluorescent detection reagents to match the light source and the filter cubes of your microscope. There's a literal rainbow of fluorescent dye choices that you can choose when designing your protocol. So when choosing your fluorescent detection reagent, you should choose reagents that match the specifications of your microscope in order to achieve optimal signal to noise ratio. Here is an example for fluorescein. The blue peak indicates the range of wavelengths absorbed by fluorescein. The blue band indicates the excitation range of standard fluorescein excitation filters. The blue band is a fixed property of the excitation filter. An excitation source down here is on a low point of the optimal absorption peak for fluorescein, and it would not generate a strong emission signal. The principle is the same on the emission side. The green peak indicates the range of light emitted by fluorescein. The green band indicates the range over which standard fluorescein excitation filters will pass light. The green band is a fixed property of the emission filter. An emission filter above the maximal peak for fluorescein won't collect much of the emitted signal. Your detection reagents must match both the excitation and emission spectra that are available in your microscope. A second step in designing your immunohistochemistry procedure is establishing your detection priorities. Some of these priorities can include the following. Sensitivity, if you need to detect a low abundance target. Simplicity whether you need to minimize the complexity and the chance for any errors in your protocol. Flexibility, which allows you to adapt to changing requirements in your laboratory. Rapid results, if you need to decrease the time to achieve your result. Cost, if you need to reduce reagent and labor costs. And reproducibility, if you need to repeat a specific assay over and over and achieve consistent and reliable results. 
So now it's time to select your reagents. What will you need to achieve the result that you desire? The first thing you'll need is a primary antibody, and this is the protein or antibody that will bind to the specific target you're interested in visualizing. The next thing you'll need to choose are the detection reagents, which will allow you to visualize that target underneath your microscope. And lastly, you may need to add ancillary reagents into your protocol. These can be due to the reagent choices that you've made or your specimen that you're using. Some may also need to be added to maximize your signal and minimize your noise. In this section, we have covered several important topics. Immunohistochemistry can be conducted at tissue, cellular, or subcellular levels. Bright field and fluorescence imaging can both be used for immunohistochemistry, and both can yield valuable information about your sample. With fluorescence microscopy, your choice of colors is determined by the excitation and emission filters available in your microscope. Before undertaking an immunohistochemistry project, it's important to establish your project priorities. Those priorities will govern the choices you make throughout your staining process. Thank you for joining us for our seminar, and I invite you to listen to the additional sessions which are available on our website.